Electricity and gas company Fortis BC is asking customers to turn down their thermostats in the wake of the pipeline explosion near Prince George amid concerns that the incident could lead to a shortage of natural gas. Joining us with more is BNN, uh, BNN Bloomberg's Jameson Burko. Good to have you here. We talked about Pleasure this explosion here. yesterday. Mm -hmm. So now we're sort of seeing some of the fallout. How long, first of all, could this last? Because we're heading into winter. It's, it's possibly some good news that we actually have this morning, Emery, because the pipeline that ruptured is technically just one of two pipelines. They run alongside each other. It's, it's pretty common that whenever you hear someone talking about a pipeline, it's not just one steel tube. Usually mm -hmm. there's at least a couple. So in this instance, the flames you're looking at right now come from a 36 inch wide pipeline that remains totally shut down right now but there's a 30 inch pipeline it's nearly as wide runs right alongside it that's just been cleared for restart a matter of hours ago so Enbridge is in the process of repressurizing and remember yesterday we talked about how the pressure in that pipeline yeah. something like 30 times the pressure you'd find for say the air in your car tire so it's going to take a while it's going to be a slow build up but once that happens there should be at least some natural gas deliveries to customers like Fortis BC because mm -hmm. I think the number they used yesterday was 700 thousand customers wow. that would be without gas if they didn't get this problem fixed essentially right now. So the fact that they're at least beginning to get a workaround here is at least some, you know, initial sigh of relief. Maybe those 700,000 people can, can breathe in mm -hmm. and then wait a few more hours before they know if they can breathe out. Yeah, I guess. Uh, and also taking a look further into the investigation of what exactly happened. Exactly, yeah. And that is still very much an open investigation, Anne-Marie, because there's even still a one-kilometer evacuation zone that remains in place around the rupture site just north of uh, Prince George. You know, you point out it's getting pretty cold. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the best time of year for no. this sort of thing to happen. So Fortis notes, you know, even just turning the temperature down, if you're not going to turn your thermostat off because it's just too dang cold, yeah. even that will make a difference at this point. How do markets react? Uh, you know what's actually interesting is you would think that there would be a big reaction to uh, natural gas markets in Canada, but what we're actually seeing, and this shows just like how interconnected the energy ecosystem in North America is, there's a bunch of refineries in Washington state mm -hmm. that rely on the natural gas from that line to be able to process crude oil. So you'd think, well, this isn't a, an oil pipeline, so it's not going to impact gasoline. Right. But they need that natural gas, those refineries, to essentially run their operations. So Shell and Phillips 66 have dramatically curtailed operations mm. in the Washington state region. And so we've already seen big spikes for gasoline prices in uh, uh, Oregon, in Washington, even as far south as San Francisco. So we're really seeing an impact for our American friends right now as a result mm. of this strictly Canadian incident. Thanks, Jameson. My pleasure, Emery.